everybody. It is Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and we have made it here today by the chin of our chinny chin chins. Uh, John is on the mic and the cameras. He's reading comments. And are we not on? We are. We are. Oh. We're going. <laughs> I just saw the intro. It was just going looping. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I'm just, I'm talking for. This happens a lot where I think we're on and we're not on. I do a whole intro and John doesn't even stop me. He just lets me go. <laughs> well, I guess I think we're on. <laughs> okay. And then all of a sudden the little machine goes, no, you're not. <laughs> Someday we'll have to do a flip where I try to go back to John's end of the world and run anything and he can come up front and teach an art class. You want to go push buttons? I can let no. you push buttons. No. Do you want to come teach art? Uh, no. <laughs> no. So it's a really good deal that we have going right now. How are you guys doing? This is a live event. If you're wondering what the heck is going on on replay, hi, everybody who comes on replay. And hi, everybody who came on live. How are you guys doing today? We have a lot of new people in the room here. Hi, old new people. Yeah, lots of new people. Lots Sometimes of, we're professional of. and we really have our kit together. Sometimes we don't know when we're on. <laughs> it's true. And that's sort of being on YouTube live system. It's like amazing this thing works at all. Well... Yes. It's amazing they give us any little corner of it to be on, considering how many people are on live gaming, right? Yeah. Like, it's incredible. So today, we're <laughs> going to work on how to pick our pictures for Saturdays, how to paint your pet portrait. That's kind of the topic, and a little bit about getting it on the canvas and what we need to have going so we can just be ready for tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited to share this with you. Um, it has been, and I know John has noticed, it's been incredible hearing about your furry family members or your scaly family members, your feathered family members you know, or your, your Hoovy family members. I've been just hearing about these amazing, amazing beings that live in all of y'all's lives that are just there for you every day. And I, I love how much you love your pets. Mm -hmm. Speaking of, this whole week I'm talking about this, the Sago Palms, poisonous to your pets. It's like a thing that's going on right now. Um, I'd like to give a shout out to Heidi who crossed the Rainbow Bridge yeah. because of a Sago Palm. And just her family's very sad, and they just want other pet owners to know the danger of those plants to their children and pets. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I just wanted to share that with you to the degree that it helps you. I hope that helps you. Yeah. Because I didn't know that at well, all. Did you know that? I did not. I did not know that. And it's a terrible way to have to find that out is, um, you know. And also, I just wouldn't think that though there's such an inhospitable plant that I wouldn't think a pet would get into them. Mm -mm. But they do. They do. Yeah. And it's, it's, I mean, with plasma treatments, it's really hard for the vet to treat. So it's really serious. Yeah. And um, but hopefully that helps you. So if yeah. you've got one, go dig it up. We've got some. We're digging them up. And, and everyone's asking if we're floating away. But no, we're, we're on a hill. We're on the top of the hill. So we're that's on why I wanted to post to you guys. Thank you for everything. We are on the top of the hill. It did, if you're new here, we're normally Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday around 11. Yeah. But what happens on YouTube is if there's a giant storm here, <laughs> then our our commercial cable doesn't work and we can't catch a stream with YouTube and we have to bump. And so we are having some flooding. If you're in Texas and you're in a serious flooded area, I really wish you are okay. We're at the top of a hill. Yeah, so we just have minor power outages. And cable connection issues and yeah. stuff like that. But we are on the top of the hill. They didn't even close the kids' school. No. Much to okay. the kids' disappointment because it is also <laughs> on a hill. <laughs> Schools all over town were closed, but not our kids. And they were just like, how is that happening? <laughs> so I hope you guys are all safe and dry. Let's talk about pictures. Let's how excited is everybody to do their pets? They're very excited. This is a very exciting topic. I'm excited. To, it is an exciting topic. And I really wanted this to be a no-draw topic. I've been seeing some portraits coming out there. And a lot of you are already kind of at the place we're trying to get. And you guys are doing a great job. Um, hopefully, this will still open up some new techniques or skills for you guys as you're painting your pets. But if you're very, very new and you've been wanting to do a pet portrait, this is hopefully a way for you to accomplish that no-draw. And the first part of picking your pet portrait is to pick a picture. Yeah. <laughs> Well, we've got a pick a picture pe pet kind of a <laughs> pick a pick a peppers kind of a little tongue twister going here, but it, it is about picking the picture. And what happens is is that you have the emotional connection to your pet and maybe a picture, but the photograph doesn't make a good painting. Mm -hmm. And and here's the thing, like even painting hyper realistic, there are some photographs that do not translate into art. It's the weirdest thing. Um, you'll hear a lot of artists talk about this, like Lockery. We'll talk about this. Locker Studios, Lisa Co. We'll talk about this. The photograph is a really important component to a successful painting. And we're going to start talking about the kind of things that make a photograph work as a painting. But one of the clues about what we're going to be picking is the word portrait. 
Okay. Right? So if we can have our first... Um, this is Graphic Stock. Graphic Stock is a uh, free photo resource that I have a uh, membership to, and I actually really like them. I use them all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's where I got these. So other than Paint My Photo, the other resource I like to use is Graphic Stock. So it's, I thought Graphic Stock had some great examples of what are good photographs of animals, but not all good painting pictures. So if we can go to the first picture, I don't know if we can. Yeah, yeah I'm going to jump over there, and I want to just, our, our community oh. is having, uh, they're, they're, I'm going to give a big shout out to them, because our moderators are doing double duty today, trying to make sure that everybody's taken care of. Uh oh, there's, there's moderators, seems, there's, thank you. Yeah, there seems to be some problem with some chat in different browsers. Chrome is working just fine, appears. That's what I'm using over here, and yeah. a couple of the moderators are using. But it looks like Firefox and Explorer are having some issues with chat. So if you're having some have, trouble... Have you ever noticed Chrome, the Google product, always works with chat? <laughs> well, I mean, that's what they're going to test on first, so... Well, they certainly seem to make sure it does. So, it, it, yeah, I, I feel like there's some preferential chat. Well, I'm sure. Yeah. So, but it seems to be working on Chrome. If you're having some trouble, you can try rebooting or try some of the other channels. But wanted to let you guys know that it's not you, it's it's the tech. So love you guys. Sorry for the trouble, but that's uh it's not, I, it's I know such Mona a was off this morning and she was really bummed. Yeah, there's some there's some it, and you know, despite that we saw a very cha fast chat going on. Woo! There. I was very busy. Chat it, chat, okay. chat. All so, right. All right guys. Love John you guys. John always sorry. gets to see those. He's so much more in the know than I am. Yeah. Sorry. Okay, you can go back to your regularly scheduled show. Oh, you want to see the pictures, don't you? I do. Oh, It'll help. <sighs> All right, so I actually have to do something over here now. I have to push more buttons. Hold on a second. And we're going to start trying to get John where he's reading some of the chat, too, so people on the replay can okay. hear the buzzy buzz that's going on. All right, you ready for me to go over there? Yeah. Pictures of cats. Pictures. All right, so we've got some pictures of cats here, and we're going to focus on our... Um, this cat? Yes, this cat. So there's several pictures of this cat. Oh, oh Okay. You. There you go. This cat. This cat. Or more of this cat? Just that cat. Hold it up for a second. Okay. So you'll see a couple that I've X'd out. And the reason for that is, is that even though that's a picture of that kitty's face, right, the eyes are closed. And it's at a very odd angle, and it isn't going to translate into a good picture, not even if you zoom in on it, right? It just isn't really going to, it would be nice for like me if I was just painting general cats, but if you're specifically trying to paint your cat, it's probably not going to give you that feeling you're looking for. So I zeroed in on these three beautiful portraits taken of that cat in the center of the picture. Okay. So you see the, the little two circles? Here, yep. So the outer circles, like these are all kind of acceptable, but my favorite one is the one in the center, and that is because the eyes are lit so well. And the tonality of the fur is uh -huh. so easy to see. And that would make a very good picture. Like the kitty in the leaves, that's going to be a rough picture. You're going to have to zoom in on that a lot. You've got a lot of leaves to deal with when they're really zoomed out and far away. Makes it harder. If the cat is looking down, it makes it harder. So when you're trying to take the picture of your pet or um, pick a picture of your pet, try to find that one where the animal has got beautiful lit eyes. That's going to be a lot of your painting. And that they are at an angle where you can really see their markings. Because that's sort of how we know our pets is their fur markings. Yeah. Right? And sometimes their expression. Okay. Uh, there's also, I'd like to add, there was a cat with a hat. Yeah, uh, there was. I saw the cat with that. That will. I know it's like a fun idea, but it's so hard to actually translate that into a good painting. I can't tell you what a trap <laughs> that is. So sometimes something makes a lovely photograph, like the two kittens sleeping together, but isn't more isn't really a pet portrait. It's complicated. It, it it's complicated. It becomes a different type of subject matter. I think we've got another picture somewhere. Oh yes, this one here. Black fur. Black fur. So what you're going to want on black fur is to have light reflected on it. Otherwise, you're just going to end up having a sort of very flat painting. Yeah. So I picked this cat out of all of these black cats um, because she, she was well-placed. This tuxedo kitten was well-placed in the frame. Yeah. And there was a nice reflection on the highlights of the fur. So you would be able to paint that if you'll notice on my example on my thumbnail when I did that Papillon, which I couldn't ever find the original picture of, yeah. when I did the Papillon, I was really dependent on those reflections to show that black fur. So that's just something to think about when you're trying to pick out your kitties that you want kind of like those contrasts. So we've got another one here. Oh, I like this. So I picked some that I thought would make very good pet portraits. 
I wasn't really loving the kitty in the basket, even though I thought that kitty in the basket was framed really well, because now you got to deal with the basket. And it's the same thing with the kitty with the glasses and the books. It becomes challenging, or kitties wearing hats or any of that. You kind of want to just catch your pet engaged with the camera. You know how sometimes they do that where they're like right into the camera? Mm -hmm. And, you know, even if they've got like, like their mouth is open and there's other stuff going on, but you just want to make sure that you're really seeing them and seeing their markings, right? So that would be something, and it's also going to be easier to trace, and those are well-lit pictures, right? They're not flat pictures or grainy pictures, right? which means when I start converting it to the black and white information, I'm going to get at least four shades of gray, which is what I'm going to need to do my pet portrait. I think I'm ready for my next one. Okay. Now, sometimes you have something that's almost there, but is not quite there. Right, like it might make a nice picture, and like this one of this dog to the side. Even though this is not looking straight on, this would make a very nice pet portrait. All the stuff we need to know about this delightful little dog is here, and we can kind of tell this dog's personality and his frame well. And there's lots of beautiful shades of tone there, but like next to it is a dog lying down, and oh. I say zoom in, you would have to zoom in and frame a similar thing for your portrait. Yeah. And again, we're down to hats. Gotcha. Makes it harder. I'm not saying in cute, I pay up with hats on things, but it takes it into this weird cartoon space. It's very hard to keep it in the space you're trying to put it in and put a hat on your pet. Gotcha. I'm not saying you can't do it. It's not gospel. Of course you can do that. I'm just saying that these are, these are challenges that you might run into. All right, now la I got this picture here. So this um, kind of fluffy, what is that, Pekingese. A parrot on top? Yeah, right? Has some very good framing, even though it's taken at a weird angle. That's actually still good framing for a pet portrait. I think the boxer down to the corner is pretty good. The husky's good. But you'll notice I put hard angle. That oh, yeah. is not yeah. the angle that you want to find for your pet. I hope this is helping. And that is not the angle you <laughs> want to find for your pet portrait. Like, actually, when I was on graphic stock, there weren't, like, there were a lot of photos I wouldn't use as a painting. Like, I would totally use them as um, a card or a graphic. They had lots of things that I would totally use in a graphic, you know, yeah. on a Facebook post if I was making some funny thing or doing something funny or thumbnail, but they weren't necessarily all portraits. And an example of this is this adorable kind of, uh, is this a West Highland White? The uh, Westie? I don't, know. I don't know. So It's a white dog. I love that picture. <laughs> and I looked at it for a long time, and I realized I would pass on this picture. Yeah? The angle of the nose and that fur while translating in the photograph fantastically would be so weird in a painting. And experience just tells me that. It just tells me that that funny angle to the right of the nose of the fur yeah. is going to be something people are going to comment on and I'm going to have trouble executing. And then when you add like this tree around and why is this dog up in the air and it would be floating. And I was like, okay, this, this is a picture that I really liked, like emotionally. But what would be hard to translate? Because people are going to be like, why is the dog in a tree? Yeah, whole bunch of questions. Let me tell you, in art, some of what you're doing is just avoiding the peanut gallery's questions. <laughs> I, you do. You do. You just start avoiding, because they're going to ask these questions, and like when you've been doing this for a long time, you start to realize, oh, there's these questions people are going to be asking, um, and you start like adjusting. Like, um, like when you're painting something, you'll start editing elements out of the picture because you realize they're not going to paint or translate well. Yeah. And then they're going to be like, what's that thing over there? You start from experience editing it out. We're going to keep talking about how to pick pictures. I actually really like this idea because I like how to correct a trip photo or how to handle this. Um, so we're going to, I'm going to show you again when you pick your pet photo, when you've picked it. Yeah. Pick your pet photo. Pick your pet photo. Pick, how's everybody doing? Are they all doing good? Go, I have questions? To go back I'm going to give you a second to all answer right, some questions. Let me go back over here to the questions. Because <laughs> I'm look, just cooking along. Oh, I have to go full I'm screen. I'm over-caffeinated today is what's happened. I have to go full screen when I'm doing that, so I can't see That's okay. We'll just on. let you have your minute to get a question. Everybody's going pretty good. Them. They're actually, everyone's everyone's just kind of cruise along. They're, they're, they're you want to read with some of the other. chat? Uh, Let's I out of... Let's see here. Just read along. This is Mona says, hi, John and Cinnamon. I'm here now. I downloaded Chrome. I <laughs> love <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. So I guess that there's a there's been some chat issuing. Some chat issues. Everyone's been saying hello. There's lots of, there's lots of hellos to each other. Okay. 
Um, love your hat, Cinnamon. Sapphire says that. Thank you, Sapphire. Froggy says, uh, 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 Crazeville Turtle says, hi, Con- hi, Consuela. I remember you. Um, hi, Consuela. Uh, <laughs> Mona, uh, uh, Yasani says, hi, Mona and Janie. Everyone's just joining in. Kim Sim says, hi, Mary. Tens of Varnish says, hi, Ian. Consuela, uh, Kim Sim says, hi, Consuela. Mona says, hi, Mary. So, I mean, uh, th- this is I just... No, <laughs> but no one knows. Here's my thing. I'm hearing back from people after on the replay. They're missing this element of it. So, it's we're going to start reading the chat out to you guys so on replay you get a sense of what it's like because it's not like anything else on youtube ian would like to know how you go about painting a rancor beast uh, ian. <laughs> so uh you get a really good screen capture from the movie uh deal with the fact that it's gonna be lower resolution than you like um try to get something in a nice framing they tend to do that on film though actually what's nice is the best artists in the world work on film so a lot of times <laughs> your screen capture really well framed <laughs> and you know same principles if that's your pet okay well there's that the, dude don't think you threw me there's at least one sad rancor pet owner yeah oh there's at least one sad rancor pet owner there is yeah. those are hard to come by too i don't know have you have i mean like have you checked the market for rancor i have not have i you? have not the unfortunate Murder of the Rancor was really challenging. <laughs> you know, you know, you're a geek when you sort of cheer. Like I cheered for Grendel through the poem. I'm just <laughs> like, I'm not even for the Vikings. I'm like, there's one Grendel and a whole bunch of you. Move. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Move your house. This is a rare animal. Just go. <laughs> it's just a funny. Seriously, as a Scrap, kid, Scrap, I was completely. We lost Scrapaholic. She's like, what is a Rancor? <laughs> oh, we just geeked up. I'm sorry, sweetie. Yep. <laughs> Sometimes we geek up. It happens. We just go geek geektastic, mm-hmm. yeah. But Grendel, that's that's great poetry. So that's literature, yeah. theoretically. 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 All right. So, so we've had a little. I just wanted to make sure we said hi. To and they love you. Uh, so the, your outfit has gotten lots of compliments, by the way. They think I really feel uh, this really worked today, and I didn't expect it to. And I think it really. I'm like kind of recovering from the trip now. Like my energy is back, and I'm yeah. Flying, even if you don't, if you're just a little out of your time zone, it kind of makes you ooh, for a bit. Yeah. Ooh. And we got some cool stuff we're waiting on clearing from YouTube clearance. Yes. Was, everyone in Sweden feels like you're showing a lot of solidarity there. A lot of blue and yellow. I, dude, I love it. I love it. And I want to come to Sweden. I want to, I wanna, you know, say hi to my favorite Swedish artist, Rick, from, you know, from his whole From the TP series, mm-hmm. which is just brilliant. Because only in Sweden would you just take a horse and go out into the outback and build a teepee and paint with a built easel. I want to go back. Still impressed by that. I, I want to go back. I thought it's a pretty cool place. Yeah, he, John's been. I I have not been to Sweden, but I want to. We're gonna, I, we're gonna I bring eat it the there. Swedish fish. <laughs> <laughs> we have lots of. Swedish I use the materials. I like Karandarash. Yeah, has some really good art materials, and I have worn the watch. So I think I need to go. Hmm. I just feel like I need to go. Plus, anyone seen the pictures Mona has pasted, painted, posted, of her hometown where she wins hometown? Oh yeah, she wins hometown. All right, we'll get back to our pictures. So the next picture okay. is you found your pet picture that you want to do, and then what do you do with it next? So whatever photo editor you have, and this is definitely not a how to use your photography. Do I, you guys send me questions like, how do I edit my photo? I don't know. That's the honest answer. There's another YouTube tutorial for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> so if you have a photo editor, whatever you got, go find a YouTube tutorial for how to use it. What you're going to want to do is pick your picture. And you're going to want to take the color out of it. Take all the saturation out of it. And then I like to up the contrast. Right? What other one have I bumped up there? I can't see it. Can you read it? Uh, No. It says contrast and exposure? Yeah. I bump up the contrast and exposure. What I'm trying to do is create greater distances between the shades of gray. I just want a few shades of gray that I can easily identify with my eye. Yeah. Right, because when I'm doing this portrait, I'm going to want to know where my deepest shadow is, and my midtones, and my highlights. Yeah, when so that's a great way for me to get that. When you see these histograms, these visual histograms, you're trying to get the most amount of the data in besides here. So if there's any big white spaces here or over yeah, here, yeah, but I'm not doing that. I'm actually making spaces. Yeah. Oh yeah, you are. Yeah, I'm not trying to color balance it. I'm oh, no. trying to create a lack of color balance. Yeah, so you get that high contrast. So I'm getting a higher contrast. Mm-hmm. I don't want to make it just black and white, but I want to step. Down. I want less shades of the gray. Yeah. So there's a picture of a kitty that I did. And let me see. I had another one I did. Yeah. Oop. The Weimariner. I go. love this one. This is so ideal. 
these dogs just beg to have pet portraits because you can really sh see his tonality. So once you get the color mix, his wonky color mix, which I'm thinking is red oxide, yeah. um, you know, and if you've got any sort of goldy, tanny, fleshy tone dogs, red oxide by golden might be a really good color to pick up. You know, they do this. Now, this is Shep. If you guys follow the chat, Shep is going to be the example portrait that I'm doing tomorrow because he had great shades. He had a blue eye, a brown eye, and three colors of fur. <laughs> <laughs> so that helps me help you paint your color of fur. Cool. So if you just want to paint a dog, you're going to come tomorrow and you can paint Shep there's with the, me. There's the color. Who's a beautiful dog. Shep has passed over in the Rainbow Bridge. And so he's waiting for his owner to make sure she has a nice crossing. Um, but we thought we would, I just love Shep and I just felt this photograph had so much soul and so much spirit and was also, again, had some gold fur, some dark fur, some gray fur, blue eye, brown eye, and white fur. So that, we're going to cover that. So I picked Shep and you saw my black and white where I took it. And so basically what happens is, I'm going to show you how I'm going to take this on my canvas. Now on this project, I'm going to encourage you to do an 8x10 or 9x12 canvas. Okay. Mm the only reason why is other than that, you're going to have to either make an enlarged print to be on your 16 by 20. You're going to go buy Kinko's, which you can do. But I wanted people to just be able to do something at home. I wanted kids to be able to just do something at home. So on this particular one, I'm like, look, if we make it an 8 by 10 or 9 by 12 canvas, I'm using canvas board. Then you can do this without having to do any special extra steps. Okay. And that's all that was. Just oh. skipping the special steps. I hope everybody's enjoying Shep. I think this they is a beautiful are. dog. Just beautiful. You know. Though I've been getting hit up with the Frisian horse. We almost all did a Frisian horse for our pet photo. That'd be cool. <laughs> all right. So here we are. All right. So I have printed Shep out onto just regular printer paper on a regular printer. And you can kind of see I've got these little fields of gray and these elements here. And what I'm going to do is I've got, now John and I used to turn these. Right, so we've got this pencil, but what it is is that I have a very nice thick graphite lead. You could just use a number two pencil. I just like this. And I'm going to just color the whole back with this graphite pencil. Now, now you, why yes, are you doing that? huh? Why are you doing that? So I can make an image transfer. Could I use some digital ground by Golden and just print on a piece of canvas sheet? Sure, I could do that. And we'll have to have a quest about that. I just learned I could do that recently. And y'all almost ended up doing that. <laughs> but again, Art supplies. Yeah, but I was just like, okay. Boy, Golden has been treating you guys great. I'm loving to hear those, those testimonies of the companies that are treating you good. And I'm so pleased y'all are having such good experiences with Golden Paint Colors and that they're answering your questions. And they are treating you so well. That is wonderful. Because you know, I really like them. Yeah, what's, what's been really interesting is that we're getting invitations from, from other places to come visit, too. I And which we're all up for. Gonna, Wait till so you see The Secret Life of Pain. It's so nice. Yeah. It's like going to be oh. back, like being in Sesame Street again. You're going to just really feel like you, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, like how it's made. It's super cool. <laughs> I'm really enjoying editing that. <laughs> it really is beautiful. It's already got like a bunch of views, and that's just from John and I. <laughs> 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 enjoying it. I'm just going to show you on this piece of paper, but you would do this on canvas board. Okay. So this is a 9 by 12. One of the first things I'm going to say that you do is please tape down whatever you're transferring your image with. Okay. Why? Because it won't shift on you then. And that is going to be the thing that makes you miserable. I tend to tape down, once I get laid, up, laid out where I want it, I tape down the top really well. That way I can lift check and return so the first thing that you're going to want to trace out on this image of information that you need is just the outline of the shape of your little furry companion right you're just tracing out the shape i'm using this little pink here i see this little kind of ear fold and i'm going to trace that in just tracing out Look, look, and I'm just doing little spikes. I'm not being crazy. You could be crazy. You could just spend a day tracing out all the little details you're going to paint out later. Not going to hurt anything. So, you know, I guess working from this, oops, I keep pushing the wrong button there. 
working from this, you could do, you know, say, Jon Snow's pet. Yes. You can do anything using this method, guys. This method that I'm showing you here will work on anything. And it can kind of lift up and show you where we're at. See how that's transferring there? Uh, hold on. Yeah, a little bit we can. I'm going to see if I can. Up the contrast or something? I might be able to. Okay. No. Oh, yeah, there it is. Can you see it? Yeah. All right. So that's kind of what's happening here. So I'm just doing this outline right now. And see, because I have this taped, I can lift it and drop it and not lose it. Right? Now, I'm going to trace on the nose here. Right? And I've got this highlight, so I want to have this here. So Showing this highlight, and then I'm going to show this highlight. Look at this. I'm finding this bright spot. Yeah. Then I come here. And, and you don't need to be able to draw to do this. No, you need to be able to trace. Yeah. Lady Fair was really worried. She's like, I can't draw. I'm like, Th this, this is, is not a drawing exercise. This is tracing. This is, yeah. This <laughs> now is I'm going to look. See this little grayscale right here, this dark shadow? Yeah. Make sure that you trace that. And I'm going to even make some little lines so that it lets me know, hey, this is a deep shadow. And inside my nostril, I'm going to make sure I know there's deep shadow. If you went to a painting party and you were doing a pet portrait and you send this in, this is all the stuff that they do for you. So if you're like, oh, this makes me miserable, you can just go to a painting party place and they'll do all this for you. <laughs> <laughs> just that's the honest truth. <laughs> if you want to outsource this work, go mm. to a pa your pet portrait place. Oh, that's true. Because, you know, you send in the picture and then they put it on the canvas for you and they trace it all out and they guide you through it. Yeah. This is just so you can do this at home or maybe you don't have, you know, a painting party place near you that does that or whatever situation that you're in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, hey. Or maybe you're, you know, stuck in the north and yeah. need to paint your own dire wolf. You got to paint your own dire wolf because winter is coming. That's right. Or maybe you want to paint your dragon. <laughs> That's true. I just don't really see Daenerys stopping and painting. <laughs> I don't know. She might just be like, I don't know. I want to stop here and paint. So I'm looking for these sort of shadows and highlights that I can outline because these are going to help me know where some of the stuff I need to be paying attention to is. I'm going to trace in my little eyes here. I really love doing that. I love that he has a blue eye. And yes, normally we don't want to put graphite on our canvas. But guys, in this one particular instance, we do. <laughs> I'm going to just print, trace out this highlight. Because we just need to know where our shapes are. Right? Where I've got um, shades of like gray and then versus very dark shades, I'm also going to trace those in. The more of that I trace in, the more it will help me make sure I get the markings in the color of my pet. And where you want to show that is you can just, you know, say scratch it, say, oh, this is that dark area. You only need to make markings that let you know what you're doing. This is your map. If you go to a painting yeah. party place, they're going to give you a map for you. You're just making your own map. So, like, look, I've got this dark fur right under the eye. And it comes around in this little shape. So I know I need to really, really, really mark that in. You know, and, there, and there's a little bit of a variance right here, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm just looking for those things. Where can I see... Slight highlights. Maybe that even goes down here. And on the, his rough, I'm noticing that it gets slightly more gray down at the bottom. So I'm just tracing that. I'm just wanting to know where that is. Later when I put him in, you know, I'm going to use this information to be like, okay, this is my darker color. Or maybe this is my brown. You know, I'm going to use both my color photo and my black and white photo to help guide me through this port pet portrait. Gotcha. And this is just going to be about you guys taking some time and slowing down and also being easy on yourselves. Okay? You guys are so hard on yourselves. There. So I've got the three little shades. They like the pink. 
pen. That's funny. I just thought y'all could see it. It's Can actually for a black on. light painting party thing I want us to do because it has black paper and these pens. But then I haven't, have not been. Todd, yeah. do you know Todd's here? And he brought cake. Todd brought cake? Yeah. Todd, he digital has, cake does not share. He has, he has 40 pounds of cake to share. We just have to show up. Well, Todd's uh, baby boy just had a birthday one year of mm -hmm. Todd keeping that baby alive, and he's really proud of that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's both a milestone for the child and for the parent. Yeah, it's just, all right, so I lift this up, and I'll see what I've got. And look, this is so crazy, but I have this gorgeous, look at this. i got to go in here and adjust the camera because okay, it's I all. I wonder if I can lift it up no, no, and no, you no, can it, see it's it. It's all about, like, me just, doo -doo -doo. Okay. see, all right, there I'll it stop. is. See, what it is is by the time I turn the, the contrast enough to get the. Can you guys see that at home, how nice that is? Yeah, you, I can turn it down, make it darker, and they can see. You, know. but you, you can really tell the... Can I go like this? No, it's, it's, it's really just sort of the dynamic difference. In the, in, so. Okay, so, well, regardless, what I have here is a beautiful color-by-number kind of little drawing. Yeah, you can, and you can see that in there. I just have to turn it dark so they can barely see it. Can they see it at all? Can I can't it. see it on the big screen. Oh, no, you can't see it on the big screen, but they can see it. Okay, as long as you guys can see it, that's fine. So this is what it should look like, and this will work on your canvas. I've got this canvas board here by Artist Loft that I got that was real cheap. Um, and I like canvas board for this because I'm going to do this at the table. And whenever I'm doing something at the table, I like canvas board for that. And this is all it takes to get your image. And so if you guys are doing the pet portrait tomorrow... Definitely get your image on the canvas before we start. Mm -hmm. um, and I have all the paint colors in that description because there's a lot more paint colors when you're doing a pet portrait, right? Like if you've got, you know, a Weimaraner, that's, that's some colors. And if you have, you know, a Pharaoh Hound, or <laughs> there's some dogs come in some colors. That's, again, why I like to pick Shep because Shep was such a colorful puppy. And that covers a lot of cats. So you might be into some red oxide, or you might be into some Australian sienna, or some of the, or raw, raw sienna. Raw sienna. Is a great pet portrait color to have in. Um, you know, your burnt umber is really good to have in. Believe it or not, Prussian blue, um, Payne's gray, there's some just great colors that you can have. And so we'll be able to talk about th that tomorrow when we do this live. And I think that you guys are going to be able to do these. And this will work for your bird, for your bearded dragon, for your goldfish. And the same sort of, you know, lessons apply on picking those photographs for any of those pets that you might have. Yeah. You know. When we photograph Blendy, I still have to look for the same thing so Blendy feels like Blendy. Yeah. Not like any other iguana. Because you, you want your He's your not an iguana. Dog. He's a chameleon. Chameleon. Sorry. Don't let Spider know I said that. Lizard. <laughs> He's a little dinosaur. Don't kid he yourself. He's he, so hissy. He he's bores. so big now I can hear him hiss when he's annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> and he just gets so like disgruntled. Like don't take him off his activity rope because he it, really likes his activity rope. But he, he's a, he, he's an insectivore. So he's not really all that scary. He just sort of hisses at you and then goes back to his regularly scheduled climbing. Yeah, and pretty much. <laughs> he just, he's like, I could eat you, giant insect, but I choose not to. He's very funny. I think he's a teenager right now, isn't he? Yeah, he's in his teenage years. So he's a little temperamental. But he, what are you going to do? We're talking like, about our pets. Yeah, we're talking about our pets. And I think we should talk about our pets because sometimes in our lives, our pets are our most supportive system in our, in, our, in our world. You know? Sometimes it's the cat that comes and sits in your lap when you're having a bad day. That gets you through. I hear, I hear Blendy hissing. I can literally hear him over here. He's having some feelings. He's like, but you know what? He's not that mad because, and here's why we know he's not that mad, because he's not sitting there with his little mouth open. Now he's just checking out my blue shirt going, well, I don't hate your blue shirt. And he likes my hats so much because they look like plant life. And he's always like, ooh. He but he may, not up for it today. He's not up for it. But you can see, like, those bright colors, he's telling us he's that he's, on. he's like, I'm ready to go. You're not going to feed me a worm. I'm ready to go. So we all have pets. And honestly, for John, Blendy has been like a really great pet, you know, through the Crohn's. Being able to care for Blendy it's has true. been therapeutic for John because sometimes John can't care for John. I don't know if that's going on in your lives, but. 
Well, it makes me slow down. Like I have to slow down to make sure that he's okay, and I have to think about that, and which makes me slow down to think about like what I'm doing. So, yeah, it's good. It's super good. Even when he hisses at me. Even when he hisses, I don't know. I find it kind of cute. I'm sure he doesn't appreciate that we find it cute that he's hissing, (laughs) but I really enjoy that he's hissing. So, you know, this isn't a quick project. This isn't an in and out project. We're going to be there a little bit tomorrow. I don't want to say this is one hoot, two hoot, or three hoot, because it's definitely two to three hoot, but it just depends on where you are in your art journey. Yeah. And and the only thing I want you to take away is if the portrait isn't gelling for you, it's not you. It's not like some lack of talent. You just need some more art skills, and then you come back to it later. Right, yeah. so there's everything that we're doing. I just want you to always look at that. Like, if something is challenging, you just don't have that art skill yet. You're not lacking talent. That's just a skill that either doesn't resonate with you. Not all art skills resonate with me. Yeah, like at all. true. Right. No, I- I've noticed that there's a lot of people who are asking questions. They have pets that are, and some of them are a real challenge because it seems uh, Wendy has an all white cat who's blind in one eye, which I think has a white eye. So it's like a lot of white. And then there's another person here who has. I have an all black dog. How do I do this? Okay. So the all black dog is about making sure that there's a highlight or reflection on the fur. Because with an all black dog, you're going to be doing a brown and a blue base. Kind of like I was doing around that cat's eye the other day. Mm -hmm. And then you put sort of the black on the top and then you hit a highlight. And really on dark animals, what you're seeing is the reflection on the sheen of their fur. Gotcha. Um, On the Papillon, that's how I did him. On the all white pets, I need you guys to look and see if your fur has a blue or warm, cool or warm tint to it. Because pet fur comes in a cool or warm tint. So Shep here, if you look at Shep, there's a slightly cool element to this fur. Hold on, let me go over and find And so I might possibly, I'm thinking of starting Shep with a mix. But there's a little bit of yellow to it too. So I'm going to be mixing a gray. Uh, kind of a bluish gray and a yellow ochre to do the undertones of this white fur. Yeah. Right. And then I'm going to be pulling it up and pulling it up and pulling it up. And that's how I'm going to get white. So that's what you're doing. So the trick is look at your photograph. Does your foot, fo- you, you, if you take that photograph of, of your white cat and your cat is just this white glaring ball with no shades of gray, you need to rephotograph your cat. Hmm. Because you need some tonal variance in the fur. You can see even the Shep's white, white fur, there's some gray in there. And you're going to need that on your white cat. And if you're doing a black cat or a black dog, like say you have a beautiful, gorgeous, um, I'm trying to think, I see these dogs all the time. They're the lady and the tramp dog. Uh, A collie? Cocker spaniel. Oh. So that beautiful black cocker spaniel, right? That is a, those dogs have deep black fur. But they have this like curl to it, and when the light hits it, there's a sheen. That's what you're going to be painting. Oh yeah. So you'll be putting it in all dark, and then you'll be painting that sheen. So make sure that when you're picking that photograph, and that's when like this project works based on the photograph, right? So I'm gonna have to say thank you to Flame. She's posting up in chat in chat the uh, how to transfer an image quest. Mm-hmm. So if those of you are, are out there, and I have to say, please do comment, like, and subscribe because I forget to say that all the time, and it does make it does help. Uh, so please do that. Okay, that's all my plug. No, I think. I think that's I think we're good for today. I think um, unless you guys have oh, any more questions. Yes, they did. They wanted oh. to know. So oh. <laughs> right there, can you pick up that giant pencil and tell us where that came from? Because this right should, here. Yeah, they were. Okay, so this is a kit. Where did we get this kit? Oh, it's a wood turning kit. It's a wood turning kit. Whoops. Yeah. <laughs> and the back of this is real interesting. This is the sharpener is back here. Right. So I can sharpen this lead <laughs> back here. And then um, this was one of those really cool. I don't know. I was really on a wood quest for a while. We were woodworking together. So John and I turned these. I think since this doesn't have inward fingers and stuff, I think you turn this one. Yeah. So we would, that was our date night, is we would turn wood on the lathe, and then we would finish it. And so the, there's a whole series of these drawing pencils so that we have left over from when we were turning wood. So to articulate what she just said is that back a few years ago, Cinnamon and I used to have a date night where we bought a lathe, and we went out in the garage, and we turned pens as a that. hobby. What do you say? this, that little pen that you just saw over there, is a result of us going out in the garage and turning those pens as just something to do. So we've got a bunch of I've these. I've got a grip the of these around. 
no, someday we're probably going to do more of this. Yeah, we're, we had to. We had to, when we moved back from Canada, we had to sell our lathe because it was big. We had to sell like everything. <laughs> like everything. Cell so. being very loose tumor just leave behind <laughs> and for very little. And um and so we we're gonna get another lathe. Because yeah. we really liked wood turning. I can't be around any of the CA glue or any of those solvent products anymore because I'm really allergic to them. Yep. But I really love the turning. I mean, like I love woods and spalted maples and ancient curries and bog wood and I, you, there's a whole thing for me. Had... Inlaid pieces and he and I used to inlay and do, and then I would illuminate and paint the little things, illuminate and paint them, and it, we just got really into it. And at one point, we were kind of known for them and sold them to oil companies. We did. I, it's true. To we actually... give his contract signing gifts because we made these insane insane pieces yeah it's actually we worked with with a couple of lo very large uh companies they what they gave us gifts when they did signings and things so yeah it was pretty cool it was we neat. were really into it i you know i mean the art thing it gets into your whole life doesn't it really yeah it never just stays contained to one little thing it spreads it does it just like awesome. borg <laughs> It spreads okay. like Borgs. You will be assimilated into this new media. Look, I just got assimilated into pan pastels. That just happened to me. Mm -hmm. And what was I shopping today? The big giant kit of pan pastels. Oh, no. And then I was thinking, maybe they'll just send them to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm on YouTube, maybe. You never know. So I hope you guys are going to join us tomorrow for the pet portrait. Yes. There's lots of people I think they are going to join us for the pet portrait tomorrow. And I can't wait to see pet portraits. And I'll try to take the part out where I traced it on and make it a mini vid that we can have unlisted that you can just click on the on pet day. Yeah. Do you think we can do that? Yeah. Okay. We'll try to do that. And um, <coughs> hopefully that will make all of that a little bit easier. Okay. We're hoping. A little bit. I may have to do, maybe do this again in like some sort of neon shot color. I'm not really <laughs> sure how we're going to make that work. So we're going to see you tomorrow. If the weather's holding and everything like that, we're going to see you tomorrow. And we're going to paint that pet. Yeah. And yes, kids' projects are coming. They're just in clearance. So they're all coming. At YouTube. So Little Brushes can be doing some fun pet painting as well. well May just be Sunday. I don't know when we're going to get it up. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm going to see you guys tomorrow at the easel. Thank you for coming today. We appreciate it so much. Love you guys. Bye-bye. Could you come the, join the, us the, live the, um, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 11 a.m. Central or enjoy one of the hundreds of paintings available on replay anytime 